Welcome to People. I'm Shirley Lin. Today my guest is Anton Tat, or also known as Aken. And uh, he is actually from France, but he's originally Vietnamese. And uh, he's a music composer, a pianist, a, song, a singer, songwriter, um, and a whole lot of other things too. And he's been in Taiwan for three years. Uh, he's lived in um, a lot of other places around Asia, like Tokyo, Saigon, Hong Kong, and he said he loves Tokyo the most. But uh, he's here in Taiwan, and that's on a very uh, unusual kind of opportunity to be here. So um, here's An. Hi. Hello. Good to have you here. Thank you. Well, actually, here, this is your home. <laughs> We're yeah, at your friendly <laughs> abode. <laughs> Yes. So um, actually, uh, so you're from France, and that's where you were, you were born. And Paris, you, yes. In Paris. You grew up there. Mm -hmm. And you said that you've always wanted to uh, live in Asia. And you've been around a lot of places in Asia. And uh, now you're in Taiwan. Um, you said that uh, you've lived in Hong Kong, Saigon, Tokyo. What other places? Bangkok. Bangkok. I, I can't say I lived there. I just spent a certain amount of time, a few months each time. Okay. Just to get a feel of the place. To decide whether you want to stay on, right? Actually, it was not about <laughs> decisions. It was more about testing the water, trying, okay. exploring. Yeah. So why Asia? Because why, I'm why, Asian. I mean, because you're Asian. Yes. Well, now, um, I mean, for me, I know I love Europe. And mm. uh, after having visited Europe, mm. I feel like, wow, that's where I want to retire. But, you know, because I want to be, I'm already Asian. I want to go somewhere where it's a different, totally different culture. But you, you want to just stay in Asia. Well, stay, uh, since I grew up in, in, in Paris, so Asia is more like a... Oh, that's true. Homecoming. <laughs> Because I'm thinking more about the fact that you're from Vietnam, but actually... I never you, lived in Vietnam. You've never, yeah. So, okay. Now, so three years ago, uh, this company kind of got in touch with you. Um, how did they find you and what did they invite you to do? Uh, that was five years ago. Oh, okay, five years ago. Uh, and uh, so they, they found me on my space and they asked me to write music for one of their plays. And I accepted and I came to Taiwan, Taipei. And I suddenly did realize that I, how much I loved it. Oh, see, look of all the places that you've been and mm -hmm. kind of, you know, spent some time. Taiwan turned out to be the one you loved the most and wanted to stay. Mm -hmm. Wow, here it is. Another foreigner new to the country who really fell in with Taiwan. Be obviously, before you Are came you to Taiwan. I'm surprised. No, I'm not <laughs> surprised anymore because there's so many foreigners that I've met who mm -hmm. didn't plan on staying in Taiwan and finally decided to stay. And, who knows how much longer they're going to stay here because mm. they love it so much. But um, you, when, before you came to Taiwan, you didn't know anything about Taiwan, did you? No, 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 no. Yeah. So, did you, when you first came, then what was the thing that struck you about Taiwan? Um, of all the places uh, in Asia I've visited, you said Tokyo is uh, my favorite place. Because Tokyo is where I feel the most um, balanced. Because the, the Western influence is really strong there, but they make it very Japanese. Huh. And that's what I like, because uh, I can feel Western and Asian at the same time without anything being compromised. It's uh, the meeting point between the two. So I like that. And uh, when I came to Thai, I felt the same way because uh, I didn't have to justify who I was oh. uh, for one thing and uh, so the Western culture the American culture is really strong here uh, but at the same time I don't know if I should say that but Taiwan is uh, also looking for some kind of identity mm. and that reflects my, my own personal story Okay. So I think that the, the mirroring of, of uh, Taiwan and my personal story really got me to, um, to uh, choose Taiwan. Oh. Well, I've lived in Japan before mm. and um, that was like a long time ago. And at the time, I didn't think that Japan was that open to the rest of the world. 
because on their own, they're very successful. They've got their own culture, their own um, identity, and they're proud of it. Mm. But now to hear you say mm. that they are so welcome the Western element into their culture, but yet they still keep a lot of Japanese identity or whatever, uh, you know, uh, in 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 their in their thing. I'm 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 surprised to hear that, and, and I guess in a way I'm glad to hear that mm. because uh, I think in the past Japanese are known to be very individualistic. They I don't are. Know if that's the word. Yeah. They are, but they have to be because. Uh, uh, and then maybe I get I will get controversial here, but if you, if uh, you compare, let's say, places like Hong Kong, Singapore, uh, Saigon, or Bangkok, uh, Kuala Lumpur, uh, and Japan, Japan has a very distinct uh, personality. Mm. You you can tell when something is Japanese. It's hard to tell when something is from Singapore or or, or Hong Kong, because. Uh, their identity, cultural identity, is not so clearly defined. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why I like uh, Japan, because they really have, they know what they want to take. So I don't know if I can say that they are open to the world, mm -hmm. but they are open enough to uh, keep an eye open. <laughs> okay, I know what you mean. Yeah. And, and then just only pick up the things that they want, mm. um, that thing would complement what they do. Mm. Now, you like Japan so much, but you decided to live in Taiwan instead of Japan. But Japan is quite that? difficult. Quite difficult? Yes, it is. Expensive? Oh, <laughs> so? Please the remind language? me. <laughs> the language, maybe? Uh, for me, it's the same because language, since I don't speak Japanese or Chinese, it's the same thing. Oh, to well, me. that's true. Hmm. Are you going to pick up Chinese? At well, actually, point? I understand more and more. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> so you're going to. You don't have time to go and take some like uh, tutoring. I mean, a Chinese class. It's not that I don't have time, but I can't even picture myself going to class, having uh, some kind of bossy teacher telling me, "Oh, you didn't do your homework well." So, <laughs> you know, it's something too old for that. I'm getting to know what kind of person you are now. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, you have a lot of your own way of thinking, and you like people to respect you for that. You have your own space, mm. yeah, and you like, like to do things your own way, no. yeah. Oh, well, that's great. Like a tiger, yeah. You're a tiger? Mm. Are you really born in the ear of the tiger? No, I'm a doggy. <laughs> so. I'm a tiger. Are you? I mm. am, really. <laughs> Dogs and tiger get along very well. Really? Mm -hmm. Now, this I didn't know. You didn't know? No, I didn't. Mm. Anyway. Okay. Well, so let's go on to your music com composition. Mm. Um, you learned the piano, mm -hmm. but the composition part you self-taught yourself. Actually, uh, when I yeah, when I was a child, I loved to improvise music at the piano, and since I didn't know what to improvise, I would just imitate the style of uh, so and so composer. Okay. So I just say uh, today oh, I'll try to do Mozart style. So I will try to find what makes Mozart sound like Mozart. How old were you then? I don't know, 11. Wow, 11. Um, I don't even know if I'm that, I was that smart then. Anyway, it's not go smart, on. It's just uh, <laughs> finding ways, different tongues. Okay. It's more that. Mm -hmm. Because uh, don't forget that I was born a Vietnamese in France. Right. So I, ha I learned, I was taught Vietnamese first and then taught French in school. So uh, to me, it was always finding another way to, uh, to communicate or another way to understand people. So the music for me was the same thing, mm -hmm. is uh, uh, how ma what makes music from the 18th century sound 18th century. So for me, unconsciously, I was uh, trying to understand that. And then it's the same thing when you listen to, uh, I don't know, jazz, and then you listen to electronic music or rap or something. Each time they have their own identity, but what makes that their identity? And for me, it's always, as a composer, it's always uh, quite exciting. Mm. Mm. That is amazing. Now, you're also a singer. Mm -hmm. Now, you sing in English? Um, and what other languages? Vietnamese? Uh, I... French. I am known to have sung in Vietnamese. And I sing... I think I heard from yeah. your website, yes. Uh, uh, sometimes in French. Yeah. Mostly in, in uh, English. 
and now I'm learning to sing in Chinese. Oh, good yeah. for you! Mm. Without having learned the language, but well, it's <laughs> it's um <laughs> it's about sounds. Okay, you mm. imitate the sounds then. It's not imitate. I I try to. Uh, you do have someone kind of coaching me. Yes, coaching you. All mm. oh, right. But you're right. I mean, we tell Taiwanese students that if the, one of the ways to learn, for them to learn the English language is to learn English songs. And that mm. is so true. Mm. So you are learning the Chinese language through singing Chinese songs. Mm. Smart, okay. Mm. And in a way, it's doing what you like most is mm. singing and yeah. music. All right. So, um, and then you also, uh, you're a songwriter. Mm -hmm. Now, what kind of songs do you usually write about? Oh. Yeah, what mood, what kind um, of style, what kind of... Actually, I see each song like a small film that tells a story about certain events in my life. So it's usually visual first before you think of the song? Mm, I can't say that it's just visual. It's just, uh, let's say that there's a shape somewhere and I like that shape and I want to get it. And then the shape is whether visual or uh, musical or just uh, a life experience or it can be a, from a book or it can be let's say I hear something and I say oh I like that uh, the way that they do it so uh, how can I um, not imitate it but how can I uh, follow that 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 path and and see what I I can do in uh, mm. with that yeah. can I um, talk about this one particular song I think um you took it from Madonna's American Life. My and God, yes. <laughs> now, you said that she was singing on a very um, kind of um, happy mood in the song, but you caught the melancholy. Uh, I always thought that she was. You thought that she was, right? In, and in most of the songs, even the happy song, if you, if you listen to the, uh, to the mel melodic line, you always can catch some kind of... Um, yearning or, or not see sadness. How you do that. How you do don't? you do that? But she said it herself actually. She said it herself? Yeah, she said in a very old interview that I'm the queen of despair. Oh. Yeah. And so you kind of watched out for that undertone in her music, no, it just in caught her songs. Me. It just caught you. Yeah, and I like the it song. It amazed so. me when you said that you, t yeah, you caught that melancholy part and that's how you wrote that song. Arrangement, yeah. Or that arrangement yeah. to the melancholy part of her music. Mm. That's but I'm not the only one. There are many other artists who do that. Well, I guess I'm not a musician myself, <laughs> so I don't. I no. don't know. Just how, it just amazes me. People like me, you know, to, to think how you guys do that. But oh. um, yeah. But you got you got that melancholy, didn't you? In your song, yes. Yeah, but it's it's exactly her 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 really? melody. Yes, I didn't change oh. that. The words are hers, and the melody are. Is hers. Oh, yeah. okay. Amazing. Mm. Um, what other um, music work that you've done that you're proud of? Um, I'm very proud of my work with that Japanese choreographer, yes. Joe Kanamori. Right. Mm. Now, you want to talk about how you met him or her? Mm, him. 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 Or, yes, I'd love to. Um, <laughs> He came to France in uh, 2004 to Paris and I was given a ticket by my father. So, uh, and at that time I was working on dance piece so I took all my dancers with me and we went to the show and we were all completely uh, flabbergasted by what we saw. It was amazing, really. And I had that thought. Um, if I'm, I'm sorry, what, what was the exhibit? Uh, it's a dance show. Oh, it's a dance. Yeah, it's uh, his, his show. My goodness, you dance too. You were dancing. No, 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 I was not dancing. I was just writing the music with dancers. Oh, okay. We were creating a piece. I was like, whoa, here's another side of you. No, 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 okay. no. I wish that... Uh, you, yeah, you look like you can be a very nice dancer. Mm, I, I You're just, fit. I, I will just keep at that. Okay. I'm looking like I could Somewhere be. Somewhere down the line, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah. not talk about okay, that. Okay, okay. So let's go back to Joe Kanamori. <laughs> mm. Yes. So he, um, he performed in Paris and we were all so uh, stunned and amazed by oh, what he did. I could see it. Okay. Yeah, it was a beautiful work. And so I had that thought that if there was one 
person I would like to work with as in dance. That was him. So I wrote to him uh, an email which, to which he responded. And then the next year I was in Japan with, um, uh, for other things. And I, and I certainly remembered that he was there. So I, I asked to meet him. And uh, he replied that he was not in Tokyo, but in Niigata. So I certainly bought the ticket, tra train ticket, booked a hotel, and came to meet him. And he was really surprised because no one had done that to him <laughs> before. And I gave him a CD of my work. Yeah. And uh, he listened to it. We met the, the next day and we just said, well, if there's something happening, then why not? And that was how it started. And a few months later, he wrote to me and asked me whether he could use one of the pieces for solo. Oh. So I said, yeah, go ahead. And, uh, and as he was working on the piece, he said, oh, it's really the kind of music I need to work on because I'm doing a full-scale ballet. So uh, would you like to write the full-scale of the whole music? And at that time, I was super busy, but I could not miss. You couldn't turn him down. No, 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 no. So I said, OK. And uh, so he worked on the choreography in Japan, and I wrote music in Paris. And I would send him the piece, and that would always be exactly what he needed. And really? they didn't have to retouch anything. And that was quite amazing. Some, yeah, that was a kind How of... How old is he? He's about the same age as you? Or? Uh, he's a tiger. A tiger. You know, when you say that, I freeze for a moment. <laughs> no, <he's> a, <laughs> I think what you're talking about. He's a year of the tiger <laughs> and uh, four years younger than I. Oh, yeah. okay. Mm. I see. And, uh, and we were both very surprised and... and, and inspired, excited, and elated. So because of him, I'm still surprised you're not in Japan. You're here. Why wouldn't you want to be I closer to him? I went a lot to, to Japan. Yeah. <laughs> I went a lot. I guess, actually, you know, the cyber world is so huge, humongous. You don't have to be in the same place. That's true. To work with somebody in mm. India or mm. in po South, South Pole <laughs> or whatever. With the anyway. penguins? No. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mm. But anyway. Well, um, you know how your face just brightened when you talk about Joe Kanamori? Oh, he's my soulmate in terms of creativity. That is great. So, so. Uh, and so that, the piece which came to Taiwan, huh? because everything is connected, you know. So, uh, Taiwan invite, Taipei, the National Theatre, invited uh, Joe Kanamori to come and he perform. He was here? He was here in 2009. Really? Yes. I missed him. Oh, well, you well. did? Well, so many <laughs> things to see. Really? When so, is he coming again? Uh, no idea. We we'll oh, have to work on you, something. You better huh? invite him. Okay. Oh, I would love to invite him, but they have to invite him. <laughs> okay. And so he, he was there in uh, October of 2009. Yeah. So of course I could not miss the opportunity, so yeah. I came as well. And that was when I thought to myself, well, I think I'm going to settle in Taipei. Just like that? Yeah, just like that. Yeah. Because most of my projects happened outside of France. Nothing mm -hmm. much happened in France. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I realized that it was a bit pointless to, uh, to uh, spend and waste my time and energy in, in, in Paris, even though I love Paris, when actually things were blossoming in, in, in Asia. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, and being in Taipei, you're close to Hong Kong, you're close to Japan, you're close to Korea, you're close to sure. all these places. So Have you been to China? Uh, no. Just once. Once. Last century. Okay. Last century. Okay. 1998. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm. Wow. All right. So besides music, actually, you, you do a lot more of this stuff. You want to talk about mm, these other things that I'm you do? I'm getting shy. <laughs> oh, you're not. Uh, well, I've... For instance, I love to do photography. Yes, that's right. Mm. You, you actually like to take photos of yourself. No, you, um, yes, you if do. you put it that way, it makes me so vain. <laughs> no, 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 I, I'm, I, I always carry my camera where I, wherever I go, and I love to do um, street photography. Mm. So I, of people? Of or people, of... It actually, be... it's more people and architecture. Ah. So like the people and their surrounding. Oh, mm. okay. But I must say, you take some very good photos of yourself. You oh, do. there you go again. <laughs> mm, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Mm. All right, so this photography part, that's just mm. a hobby? Or you want to turn that into something professional? Um, 
I don't think in that, in, in that term. Uh, it's more that it has always been there, like watching films or reading. It's important in the creative process for me. So when I take picture, I, uh, I find another way to, um, to express something visually. Mm -hmm. And when I write music, I'm very visual as well. So everything is connected. Mm. So I need to take photos, as I need to write all the time. So there are pieces of music where you produced through seeing a photo that you took. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or something I saw. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Oh, wow. You're also writing a book, or mm. you've written several books already. No, you. No, <laughs> no, no, no. What, what, what is this book about? Um, I was approached by an editor from who lives oh in Hong goodness. Kong. Oh my someone thought that you'd be a good writer. Mm, I don't know if that's what he thought, but uh, anyway, he, he approached me and he asked me whether I could write something about music, about my music first. And then I thought, uh, I told him, well, since I'm not um, known by anybody, what, why would I write about my music? No one would read that. And I told him that it would be more, maybe more interesting to uh, fictionalize uh, uh, events of my life and turn them into a book because mm. actually when I write music it's really from my life experience a lot so uh, each song or each piece of music can have a, has a story mm -hmm. so I say why not uh, write all these um, chapters and stories and connect them together and make and turn it into a book so that's how it came to life well how far are you in the book? Mm, it's all here. <laughs> okay, mm. all right. So well, I can't wait to see it because um, through the book I get to know more about you. Uh, so you've got a lot of interesting uh, stories, events, things that happen in your life. Mm -hmm. They're going to be all collected in this one book. Not all, but some of them, yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to choose a um, title of uh, songs from my albums and each title will be a chapter. Okay. Yeah. Is it going to be like a sound book? Are you going to include a CD in there with some of your music? You, you should. read my mind. Yes. <laughs> Actually, yes. Yeah. And uh, I want to do a soundtrack to the book as well. A soundtrack to a book. Wow. Mm. Okay. But the soundtrack actually are the songs. But yeah. um, I'm, I'm thinking about developing uh, something extra for the mm. book. So um, is part of the book going to be about Taiwan, about these three years you've been in Taiwan? Um, actually, it's not so... Um, it's about my life, but I, I'm not going to name myself. The character will have a different name. Oh. And it will span three generations. Three generations? So the book starts with my From birth, Okay. but it ends with mm, like two, gener two generations after me. Yeah. A science fiction book? <laughs> it can be, yes. Well, that's very creative. But that's the book. That's very unique. No, why, why is it unique? I don't know, I just feel like that like, kind of book sounds unique. Oh, uh, maybe. Yeah. Um, okay. Yes, yeah, so it's, I think the book is about um, creativity in one's life. So for me, it's more cr uh, artistic creativity, but it yeah. can be any sort of creativity. And, um, Interesting, mm. yeah. yeah. Let's go back on your music, yeah. you know, Actually, you produce music for a lot of different occasions. Mm -hmm. Now, you said, you know, you know Joe Kanamori. Now, mm. he's a dancer, so mm -hmm. you create music for that. But you've also created music for, should I say, fashion shows? Mm -hmm. oh, not fashion show, but fashion, but yes. Fashion. Mm. Like, um, actually, you've worked with Johan Koo, mm -hmm. who's a Taiwanese fashion designer based in London. Mm. And um, uh, this piece of music you made for his video, mm. um, he actually, uh, on his side, he cooperated with um, Cai Mingliang, who is a famous Taiwanese director mm. in Taiwan, and, um, even though you've never met Cai, Mr. Cai mm. himself. But, um, Master Cai. Uh, no, Master, Cai. Master Cai, yes, of mm. course, Master Cai. Mm. Um, yeah, that's, what, what's that experience like, making music for a fashion video? And you have to see this thing. It's mm. just only one model, and she's very um, artistic, and the movements, it, it, it takes, every person I'm sure would have different interpretation of what the video 
is trying to convey. But uh, it's quite interesting. It was uh, in you know kind of videotaped in the under one of those underpass. Yeah, kind of underpass. Yeah, and uh, a narrow one. It's in Taipei, right? It's in Taipei. Yeah, and um, with all these. Um, what do you call these bubbles, these foams, mm. right? But that's what actually he used for his last film, Visage, uh, Faces. Oh, because I only saw one of his videos, Which one? films. That one. That one. Yeah, so, so actually, that I think uh, he did that he, after the film. So he was still in this kind of uh, atmosphere and setting. Uh-huh. And, um, I'm, you know, I, I've never seen a, a fashion, I mean, a, a model, um, not just being a good model, but also being a good actress. Mm. <laughs> but I'm sure there's it takes master Tsai to kind of you know giving directions about how she should move and put put her hands and mm. things like that. Very um, surreal. It's very mm. artistic. Well, and that's the what music. Uh, Johan Ku's uh, work is. Yeah. Oh yeah. By the way, Johan Ku, her his uh, main um, how should I say uh, material that he uses is knitwear. Hmm. Knitwear, yeah, just from top to bottom is knitwear. Okay, so yeah, sorry. What was that experience hmm. like? Um, it was really nice because it's the same. I was approached to uh, by the National Theatre to write music for a dance show, hmm. and I declined it. But I knew that Johan was uh, going to do the, um, the 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 costumes. Yes. So I wrote to Johan and said, oh, it's a shame, I will not be working with you on that, and I really hope we'll find something. That's your first time Connecting. emailing Johan? Mm. We've been in touch through Facebook, but just uh, hello, hi, this kind of thing. Oh. And, um, and then I wrote to him, and he replied to me, he said, oh, but actually, I think I might need you very soon. And then he told me about that. And as I was writing the music for that, fi for that short film, he said, uh, he asked me, oh, can you write music for actually 10, uh, 10 other short films because I'm going to present uh, videos of my new collection for a uh, exhibition in Hua Shan. So I said, oh, okay, why not? And wow. that's how we started. That's great. Mm. Well, you're very proactive, you know, taking initiative in meeting these, these prominent people. I need to learn from you. Just, Just follow your... Just that courage and boldness. For me, I like it, I say it. That's great. Yeah, it's simple. You can be my mentor, I need to learn from you. Well. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, this program people, I'm always constantly looking for interesting people to go on my show. Mm. Yes, I need to learn the bonus in approaching people and say, can you come on my show? Well, it doesn't work all the time. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I need to be more positive because I'm mm. not, you know, in general, I'm not a very optimistic person. I'm very shy, actually. You don't look it. I don't look it, but I, I, I can be really shy when I admire somebody. Yeah. And oh. Yes. Okay. And I think, oh, am I worth it? Oh, can I talk to that person? Well, yeah. that's how I feel. Mm. Yeah. I feel okay. that way too. But sometimes the, um, the excitement of, uh, of uh, liking somebody's work is so strong that I, I have to do something. Well, all right. Talk about your future plans. In Future Taiwan. plans in Taiwan. Yes. Uh, two, um, I'm going to write music for two long feature films. Really? Mm -hmm. I mean, Taiwanese local films? Mm -hmm. We're talking about movies. Mm -hmm. Great. Yes. Uh, I've started writing music for films in Taiwan. Okay. And uh, for the past year and a half. And uh, one is called um, When Dove Flies. Oh, uh -huh. when doves fly, actually, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's by two first timers. In uh, they have done some short films, which were noticed by uh, festivals and oh, good. yes, and uh, so that one is uh, is going to be shot uh, this autumn, mm -hmm. and beginning of next year will be another film All right. by a very young, talented uh, director. Really, mm. oh, that is great. Mm. And so whom I met actually. Uh, through Johan, oh. so it's everything is connected. Oh, isn't that great? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's really wonderful. Yes. What is it about Taiwan that made you want to stay? Taiwan, typhoon. No. Earthquakes. <laughs> stinky tofu. Okay, that's more like it. <laughs> no, 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 no. If I 
Uh, there's a guy who does stinky tofu uh, down on the street every day at four o'clock. Whatever I do, I, f I, I see. I see. It's not. I, f I four smell. Four in the afternoon. Yeah, four yeah. in the afternoon. I, 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 my, my nose is hit by some smell, and then, uh, there he goes again. Yeah. He does stinky tofu, and he goes to sell them on the street. Do you like it or you don't? I still don't know. Well, by the way, I tell it, I don't like it. No. <laughs> well, that's unfortunate. So you probably need to tell him to move his stand somewhere else. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. It's part it's of fine. how it is. So, uh. But that tells you it's four in the afternoon, right? Oh, yes. On the dot. Really. <laughs> okay. Mm. Well, hey, good luck, An, mm. with your projects. Thank I you. I think you've got a great future ahead of you. I can tell. Thank you. You're full of ideas, full of enthusiasm. Mm. Good luck, really. Good Thank luck. you so much. Thank it's you. been a lot of fun talking to you. Yeah. All right. Goodbye. Okay. Thank you for watching, people. I'm Shirley Lin.